All right, this is just a quick set of notes on strong and weak acids and bases. They're not the most exciting, and honestly, half of it's just memorizing. Sorry. So a strong, weak acid, strong acids. Um, hydrochloric acid and hydrofluoric acid appear to be similar, but there's a really important difference between the two. The first one is hydrochloric acid is considered a strong acid because it completely ionizes in solution. That means the H, you put HCl in water and you're gonna get a whole lot of H and a whole lot of Cl minus floating around. It's gonna completely disassociate. So the H's and Cl's completely leave each other alone. Hydrofluoric acid is considered a weak acid because when you put it in water, you are gonna get some H's, which is the part that makes it the acid. And then the fluoride, the fluorine, fluoride ions, are, but it's not gonna completely come apart. So there's still gonna be some of these HF's floating around in solution. So you're not, it's not gonna react as strongly as hydrochloric acid. That's why it's considered a weak acid. So this is what I was just showing. When hydrochloric acid dissolves in water, it completely ionizes, so there's no HCl. It goes, and we show that with an arrow. It completely breaks apart, okay? Here's the thing. So there are six strong acids, and honestly, besides memorizing them, there's not a great way of remembering them besides that. Sorry. So five of them are called monoprotic acid, which means it's just H1. Okay, so the simplest types of acid. There is one which is diprotic, which is actually part of why it's so strong, is it actually when it dissolves in water, it releases two hydrogens. So these are the six, and I'm sorry, you just gotta know them. HCl, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, which honestly does not come up very often, and sulfuric acid. Those are the six. You just, just got to know them. Sorry. A weak acid, here's an example, HF is a weak acid because it only, it only part of it dissolves. Um, and so you still have a bunch of HF still floating around and we show that with the little double dash line. So if you see an, uh, an acid reaction listed like this and you see the double arrows, that means it's actually going back and forth, back and forth because you're still, you put it in there and you still have some of the intact HFs floating around and then some of the hydrogens and the fluorines there. Okay. These are some common weak acids. Honestly, if it's not one of the six, they're considered weak acids, okay? So these are, again, diprotic just means it's H2 something. Triprotic means it's H3 something. It's just vocabulary words. Don't worry too much about it. Um, some of them are actually have different, like sometimes they're weak as both H and H2. You just have to know the list, okay? Um, so sulfuric acid, sulfurous acid, hydrofluoric acid, acetic acid, carbonic acid, formic acid, phosphoric acid. These are all weak acids, okay? You don't really have to memorize these. It's if you know the six that are strong acids, Every other kind of acid is a weak acid. Strong bases, strong bases, base, again, it's the same thing. It's just how well they break apart. Ionic compounds, NaOH, it's an ionic compound. This is a strong base because NaOH almost breaks apart completely when you put it in water. You don't have any NaOH floating around. You just have a bunch of Na's and a bunch of OH's. A weak base is basically the opposite of a weak acid, okay? Most of the ones that don't contain OHs, so these are the, the Arrhenius bases. Remember, the definition of Arrhenius base is it contains OH, right? And then when you get in the bronston lowry definitions, those are the ones that are proton acceptors. So the bronston lowry bases are weak bases, okay? Arrhenius bases are normally strong bases. So if you see OH in a base, it's going to be a strong base. Okay, NH3, again, here's an example. Remember, NH3 is a bronsted lowry base. It is a proton acceptor. Um, so when you put it in water, some of it will actually accept a proton from the water. 
and make NH4 and OH, but you're still gonna have a bunch of NH3 just kind of floating around. That's why it's a weak base. There are many weak bases. Most bases are weak, but if you notice this table, these are just some of them, you'll notice, whoops, that none of these have an OH in them, okay? So the weak bases are the bronston lowry bases. A strong base is gonna be an Arrhenius base, which has an OH in the formula. Okay, that is it. So the, basically the way to remember it, here's your summary. There's six strong acids. You just have to memorize the six, sorry. Weak, ba weak bases are, or sorry, weak acids are anything that's not one of those six. Bases, strong bases are bases that contain OH. So they are Arrhenius bases are strong bases. Any other base like the bronsted lowry bases that do not contain OH is considered a weak base. Most bases are weak. Okay. That's, it's, it's a lot of just general memorization. Sorry. All right, good luck.